Imagine this. You're at a museum, looking at a painting. The painting doesn't look like much of anything, just geometrical shapes seemingly randomly arranged. Some lines here and there, but nothing seems to serve a purpose. Nothing seems to make sense. You're looking at abstract art. Another visitor stands next to you. He looks at the same painting as you. He seems moved by it. Looks at it intently. Unlike you, you look puzzled, confused. He looks captivated. What does he know that you don't? This video is for you. The main problem with modern art is that it doesn't really mean anything to most people. This video will give you some tools and theoretical background that will help you to find meaning in abstract painting. And who knows, maybe even to impress your friends. To keep it simple, in this video we'll compare just two paintings. One will be what we might call traditional art, and the other we might call a modern or abstract painting. This is Le Sermon des Horaces by French artist Jacques-Louis David. It was painted in 1784. And this is Composition 8 by Vasily Kandinsky. It was painted in 1923. Now, you might wonder, what is going on in the second painting? You can immediately see how the first painting gives up its secrets on first viewing. What you see is what you get. The question of, what am I looking at, is immediately and easily answered. This is not the case for the second painting. The second painting requires some thinking. Well then. If the job requires thinking, let's consult one of the greatest thinkers of all time, Arthur Schopenhauer. Schopenhauer has sometimes been called the artist's philosopher because of his lasting influence on the artistic world. And even though he died in 1860, well before abstract painting was a thing, his grand theory of aesthetics will prove a valuable guide in our quest for understanding. By the way, we have done a full video just on Schopenhauer's theory of art on this very channel. If this video leaves you hungry for more, we highly recommend you check it out. Link in the description. A quick recap. According to Schopenhauer, this world of ours is horrible. Human experience is all about suffering and not much else. Plants mercilessly fight each other for sunlight. Rabbits then eat the plants. And then wild dogs eat the rabbits. The wild dogs, in turn, are hunted down by vicious wolves. Human life is nasty, brutish and short. We are creatures of desire, in Schopenhauer's words, creatures of will. Permanent, never-ending willing. Wanting, desiring, needing. Luckily, art is there for us to offer some escape. When we enjoy art, what happens is we temporarily forget the suffering of the world and of ourselves. When we enjoy art, we are lifted for the moment above all willing, i.e. all wishes and cares. We become, as it were, freed from ourselves. The metaphysical reason for this is because when contemplating art, we are actually contemplating platonic ideas. However, for the purposes of understanding abstract art, this is not that important. Because we need to talk about music. Music for Schopenhauer is the highest art, lonely, 
untouchable at the top. Why? Because music is not a representation of a thing in the world. In it, we do not recognize the copy or repetition of any idea of existence in the world. When we enjoy a piece of music, we do not enjoy a copy or a representation, we enjoy something else. Let's take another look at David's painting. Notice how it's a representation. David has recreated a scene. We see people, swords, buildings, clothes, emotions. In other words, we see a piece of the world. But remember, the world is an evil place. Therefore, the less we see of it, the less we have to endure, the better. This is why music is the highest art form. Unlike other arts, in music there is no physical component, no representation. Even in literature, the reader still has to imagine a scene. This is not the case with music. What does music look like? But music has to mean something, right? So, if it's not a representation, then what is it? The answer is will. Music is a pure expression of the inmost nature of our reality. Music allows us to go beyond this false, illusory world of representation. Through music, we feel immediately connected to the inmost nature of things. This is why the effect of music is so much more powerful and penetrating than that of the other arts. For they speak only of shadows, but music speaks of the thing itself. Maybe you see where we're going with this. Let's take another look at Kandinsky's Composition 8. Is this a representation? Maybe. But is it equally as representational as David's painting? Absolutely not. With David, we had humans, swords, buildings. With Kandinsky, shapes, colors, circles, squares. Just what is Kandinsky trying to do here? Could it be that Kandinsky is trying to make a painting that's not a representation? A painting much more like music? That is to say, a painting that's not a painting of anything, but a painting in itself. The forms, movements and colors which we borrow from nature must produce no outward effect nor be associated with external objects. The more obvious is the separation from nature, the more likely is the inner meaning to be pure and unhampered. It turns out that was exactly what he was trying to do. A pioneer of abstract painting, Kandinsky was also a writer. He jotted down his artistic ideas in books like On the Spiritual in Art. This is the core of the matter. Abstract painting tries to depict something beyond our material world. Kandinsky called it the spiritual. Schopenhauer would call it the will. No matter what you choose to call it, you are trying to leave behind the material world, trying to communicate a deep spiritual truth, that there is something beyond the material. Almost by definition, this project is doomed to fail. Paintings cannot be separated from the material realm. There is the canvas, there is the paint. Inevitably, you must paint something. A shape, a stroke of the brush, a splatter of paint. The task of the artist is to try his best. Kandinsky invites us to look beyond these inevitable imperfections. In a conversation with an interesting person, we endeavor to get at his fundamental ideas and feelings. We do not bother about the words he uses, nor the spelling of those words, nor the breath necessary for speaking them. We realize that these things, though interesting and important, 
are not the main things of the moment, but that the meaning and idea is what concerns us. We should have the same feeling when confronted with a piece of art. This, in essence, is how to understand abstract painting. Painting trying to be like music. Immaterial, overwhelming, contemplative. Does that mean all abstract and modern art is deep and meaningful? Not really. Kandinsky warns us against this. Abstract art, the artwork of the future, faces two dangers. On the one hand is the totally arbitrary application of color to geometrical form, pure patterning. On the other hand is the more naturalistic use of color in bodily form, pure fantasy. Either of these alternatives may in their turn be exaggerated. Everything is at the artist's disposal and the freedom of today has at once its dangers and its possibilities. Art is not a science. Art should make you feel something. Abstract art tries to make you feel like you are part of another world. The immaterial, spiritual world. The world of will. Not all artworks will have that effect on you. But some might. So, next time you're at the museum, and you don't know how to interpret an artwork, just relax, try to remember this video, but don't think too hard, and just try to feel.